Now we're live. Let's see here. We can just start talking about this video that I'm going to pull up. You think that the let's see da, da, da. Yeah. <laughs> this one should be funny. All right, let me get it again. So, it's not one. So, it. Let's see. Here we go. The Andromeda Galaxy is another universe. Why is the audio not no. wanting to come well, through? I can hear the audio, so for me, it's good. Why does my computer not want to give me the audio? It's so, bro, like. About 150 years ago, it was called Another Island Universe. Mm -hmm. And as we talk about things like the Big Bang and maybe things that might be before it or a cause of, then the whole question of what the universe means arises. And your presentation doesn't deal with that well. And the, there are physicists who give serious. Oh, he just got called out. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Uh, mine had trouble connecting. What just happened? Here, I'll go back. It was funny. The guy just called Frank Turk out. It was hilarious. Oh, is that when he when he said? Uh, and your years here. ago, it was called another island universe. Mm -hmm. And as we talk about things like the Big Bang and maybe things that might be before it or a cause of, then the whole question of what the universe means they are deal with that well. And the, there are <laughs> physicists who give serious ideas. Bro! He just, I love how he just so openly says, you didn't deal with that well, but I appreciate the honesty. And, um... Frank Turk, is that an objective or a subjective statement? Yeah. Am I objectively not handling that well or only subjectively not handling that well? <laughs> I'm going to try and keep my camera off as much as I can because the lighting in this room is horrible, like, yeah, really I'll, see, I'll, so. I'll just keep mine on because I like to emphasize with my hands when I'm speaking. So I'm just going to leave yeah, it on. No, for you, should, you should watch me. Like when I'm talking and when I'm debating, bro, my hands are like <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, like I'm always like, trying to emphasize things. And, I, and if I can't describe something well verbally, I always try to describe it with my hand motion. So, yeah, let, let's continue with this and see where it goes because I oh, I'm this. Got him. Idea <laughs> as well as there's this marvelous thing called um, colliding membranes, and your presentation does not serve your your listeners well to not acknowledge them. Are you are, are you so? If you want questions, are you familiar with the membrane idea that the membranes collide? This causes this repeating universe, which you don't like. You're going to say entropy is violated, and so on, like you did in Knoxville. Are you familiar with the membrane colliding theory? Yeah, hang on one second. I'm looking for something here. Hold on. Stand by for Vector's Victor. He's going to use his... Uh, as you know, Forrest... And we should say hypothesis because... Right, yeah. Hypotheses are things that don't have evidence behind them yet. Okay. In fact, yeah, we're well, struggling to find ways to test them. You can say anything you want, but there's a difference between a possibility and evidence for a possibility. Right? You can say yep. that we're all created by green leprechauns. But that doesn't mean that that's a theory that has evidence behind it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. This is like a total dodge of the question. Yeah. Well, to be fair, the guy was being kind of a dick. But at the same time, Frank's responses are pretty terrible so far. And I actually think that this criticism that Turk's arguments don't take into account the many 
other possibilities that are offered by modern cosmology is a big issue that comes especially when you're talking about pop apologists because there are different cosmological models different models of the universe's inception of how it functions of cycling universes all of these different issues that frank just glosses over he doesn't talk about them right and so for this guy i don't know who he is to bring up this issue and say your presentation here does not serve your listeners well because they have not been handed a sufficient understanding and critique and analysis of the modern cosmological data and hypotheses i think that's a very valid criticism however frank in his usual manner glosses over this and creates some silly analogy objection or reference that completely derides the whole conversation and so he once again avoids responding honestly to a serious and honest question uh, very much in character for Turek here. Well, I mean, that's just kind of <laughs> Frank Turek in a nutshell. Like, bring up some random idea and then kind of avoid the question all in itself. What has happened over the past has been that the standard Big Bang cosmology has taken all sorts of attacks from all sorts of different directions, oscillating universes, membranes, all this kind of thing. And it has come through as still the standard model for good reason. Do you understand that the, the Big Bang theory merely says that the universe went through a hot, dense phase about 13.8 billion years ago? It does not say that there was a creation event before that. That's one of the possibilities. A lot of even the if even I, I could go through quote after quote here. For I, I, I think we served my purpose. You're... I, I would I would love to join that group. I'm not sure which oh, yeah. group that oh, yeah. is, though. Yeah, me neither. But I'm totally open. Wait, this is hold on. I think I know who this is, but I'm not exactly sure. So I'm going to check that really quick. So, yeah, um, Turek responded by saying that we the, the uh, excuse me the big bang model has been attacked from various angles philosophical scientific etc but it still remains the best model right B but he didn't actually try to show any evidence for this and it's kind of an sequitur to point out that in the past this theory has been critiqued and assailed from a variety of perspectives and has not been shown to be incorrect in its predictions and assumptions uh, scientifically. However, he doesn't take it upon himself to actually look at these other models that are still very open and live options for cosmologists today to accept, because there are many cosmologists and theoretical physicists who accept models of the universe that are not in direct concordance with the Big Bang Theory, or would postulate events, times, quantum field existing before the universe, prior to the universe's inception in uh, the Big Bang model. So it's just a very narrow view of the science itself. It's a very parsimonious perspective on what's actually being said in the modern cosmology. So, yeah. it's Frank um, Turek is a bad apologist. Yeah, yeah I think really I, is, yeah, that's, that's like, I couldn't agree more. Yeah, 100%. Frank Turk is a terrible apologist. He is not good enough to be a philosophical or intelligent apologist, but he's also not a good enough communicator and not convincing enough to be a good pop apologist along the lines of William Lane Craig, for example. So, yeah, Frank Turk exists in this limbo between being a good intelligent apologist and being a good pop apologist, and he ends up being absolutely neither. Yeah, his, his work is horrendous, right? His books, I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist, Stealing from God, is just typical precept trash that doesn't deserve any intelligent or philosophical critique or analysis. It just deserves to be completely discarded from any rational discussion, at least in my view. So, yeah, I don't like Frank Turk, if you couldn't tell. All right. One thing I do want to point out is that there are good precepters. There are some good precepters, right? Like I like Van Til. A, like a Van few Hill. other people. Yeah, there are... There are very, very good preceptors, but a lot of people like Frank Turek and 
uh, more of your unintelligent um, apologist really kind of skew the view of precept. Even though, even if I did, even though I do like Van and Till, I just, it just does, like, I don't find it, it's just weird to me and it doesn't really help anything. I yeah. find it to be kind of circular. Uh, right. I but think there are just certain things that I think apologists need to stay away from. Yeah. I think that even the more sophisticated preceptors put forth arguments that are filled with flaws that are explanatorily vacuous and rely on outdated or flawed metaphysical assumptions for their premises. Yet at least they have the intelligence and integrity to put forth concise and honest arguments, which Frank Tarek seems to have neither. And that's why his arguments are usually not only flawed, but misleading in many ways. So wait, is Gabe on? Did Gabe join? Hell yeah, let's go. So uh, Gabe, we're midway through a Frank Turk oh, video. Wow. All right. Yeah, and um, it's horrible. So. Well, I assumed. So. Did he address the possibility of the universe being a brute fact? Uh, no, in this video, he did not. And I, well, so far at least. And I think that's okay because the question here wasn't really whether it is philosophically tenable to hold the view that the universe was in fact uncaused and did not have a sub sufficient explanation of its existence. The question was, what if the evidence for the Big Bang Theory is actually not sufficient to hold the specific cosmological model? What if there are other models that describe and explain the data better and are in fact correspondent to reality that wouldn't lead to the type of creation ex nihilo that is postulated? Well, not even postulated by the Big Bang Theory but it's postulated by pop apologists in their dishonest interpretation of the Big Bang Theory. So there's that, right? And uh, yeah, if Jackson's ready, we can continue with the video. Yeah, I missed half of it. First bullet in that slide that had, it said creation, TL, TL, I'm gonna mangle that word. Help mm -hmm. me with that word, teleology. There we go. The first bullet, we've now demonstrated you've made a strong claimer than you want. Uh, uh, you made a claim stronger than you want. I'm re right. ready to surrender. Okay, let, let me just, before you go, Forrest, I just want to point something out. Let's say, I don't grant this, but let's just say that uh, somehow there's a new cosmological theory that comes along that supplants the Big Bang, right? Because science, no, as you pointed out... It I'm, doesn't I'm, supplant it. The, it I'm, will enlarge it. Okay, and in, okay. The Big Bang will be a special case of, or... All right. Let's just say that cosmology is tentative because science is tentative. This is. No, no. I love the fact that the guy starts talking and then Frank Tucker's just like, oh, okay, man, shut the hell up. Like, we're, we're done here. And it'll just like shut them down. I find that very endearing. And then he just goes on with his presentation. I actually. As normal. Oh. In, his, in his book. So I have like the summary here. Oh, no. In his book, but it was like, you can tell he doesn't understand fully what he's actually talking about. He like, never does. <laughs> well, that's true. But you can tell he doesn't actually understand what he's talking about. Like, I don't think he, he – he's not getting the guy's question. And then he's like, yeah. well, you're not getting yeah. me, but you're not. he's not getting the guy's question. Right, is yeah. The guy's, is the guy's question like – what happens like if the big bang isn't actually the way we, we think it is like it doesn't have the implications that we would like it to yeah well no. he's, what he he's asked kind of, well, kind of. he asked like is frank turk aware of some of the other theories in cosmology uh, and frank turk just right. totally dodged the question because you could tell he doesn't actually know about him yeah so and he, then he goes into this whole rant about how Science is like whatever. Science is tentative or whatever, right? So the guy was like, hey, what about these other modern cosmological models that have been offered by physicists that John might provide Carol. a more harmonious or superior explanation? But from characters point said, you know, they've attacked the Big Bang the, the Big Bang theory before, and it still stands, therefore, all of these other models are just irrelevant. 
he didn't actually address them. He didn't talk about them or show how they're incorrect or unlikely to be corresponded to reality and their predictions and claims, right? So it's just it's just yeah. a dodge. He completely ignored the but, argument presented. And yeah. The best alternate that I've seen is the Hartle Hawking model. And it's like it's the one that's like curved on the back. And if like, Right, the the one that avoids the singularity, right? Yeah, and it has like a, a no boundary um Yes, the no boundary model. Right. And then that's where Stephen Hawking said, therefore, God can't have created anything because there's no time before the Big Bang. Yeah, that the guy went from talking about really, really, really good science and terrible, terrible philosophy in like two minutes. Yeah, it's I think that whether it be science or philosophers, we have incorrectly softened and blurred demarcation between philosophy and science where we have scientists who are brilliant at their work at their scientific work obviously making these horrifically incorrect and fallacious philosophical claims right so yeah, you don't have john polkinghorne's the only scientist that i know of who actually knows about philosophy well polkinghorne is also a theologian right so he's trained yeah. in philosophy and so, his, all right do we want to go ahead and just yeah, let's just let's just go destroy it, destroy this video really quick. Yeah, let's just finish this one up really quick before we continue. This is not tentative here. What I'm about to show you oh. it shows that time had a beginning. This is a philosophical argument. Oh, no, he's <laughs> oh, oh no, he sucked. Okay, his argument against the infinite regress of time is actually. He doesn't even use the one that William Lane Craig uses. He like, uses right. ass. Like, literally. It's unbelievably ignorant. It's is it terrible. The, is it the one where it's like, we couldn't get to today if time was infinite? Yeah. Or is that different? But, like, he does it. Okay. So it's I can see where one. he's going with it. Yeah, I can see where he's going with it. Like, I can understand where he was trying to get at. But the way he puts it... And the way he tries to philosophically argue for it, it's right. Yeah, it's, really, really bad. It's terrible. Like you can do like, the argument. Surprised if... huh. Well, I think the, the I don't know. I think you had to mute his microphone really quick. But I think the problem for me is that Turk doesn't even try to address or argue against eternalism. He just assumes presentism or a version of a theory of time, right? There is no consideration or sympathy towards any sort of B theory, which I hold to. And I think serves as a very powerful defeater for the Glom because I don't think that the past, present, and future are actual metaphysical realities. There are different points uh, on the space-time manifold, but there is no progression from past, present, and future. It's all existent simultaneously. And in that case, there is no beginning to exist of the universe. It's always- Probably not, Joshua. Yeah. No, probably, he <laughs> probably doesn't. He doesn't know what A theory, B theory is. I don't think, like, he just, time is time. Yeah, like, I think if you were to I'm, offer that to Turk and be like, hey, so why do you assume the truth of A theory and refuse to go into a detailed rebuttal to B theory? And he's like, the only theory I believe is in, is in G theory, and that's God theory, man. Or something like that. I just don't think he's very knowledgeable. The or... issue with Frank Turek is he doesn't really think about things like philosophically, logically, right? It's just as long as it fits with what he thinks the model of God he has, that must be true. And he's right. going to argue even It's a uh, oh, sorry, even sorry, if it's stupid. Yeah, it's, I think there's a key distinction to draw between an apologist's mindset or an apologist's method of thinking and a philosopher's, right? Because Turk thinks like an apologist. He you, tries to enlist and use philosophical argumentation and rational discussion to his advantage. But since he goes in with these preconceived conclusions and these notions that are not philosophically supported. I'm in here. I'm doing something. His yes, I'm doing a classic. What are you doing? I'm doing a live stream all flat. So yeah. 
Okay. Oh, uh, I mean, I don't know how many times <laughs> I'm doing something. All right, we better continue with this because I'm about to. Uh, You're gonna have to cut I, that out. I was gonna say so I no. love. I love the fact that we said, okay, let's finish this video and we'll talk about when it's done and then move on to other topics. Then we like go for five <laughs> seconds. We've already stopped it and talked for three minutes about. <laughs> hey, but he's like, he goes from like freaking the big bang to like infinite regress of time to like moral standards in like two minutes. Yeah. There's no focus or clarity of thought. There's no perspicuous analysis of the issues at hand. It's just this jumbled disorganized mess of apologetics uh, cat phrases it's i, it's so I wouldn't horrendous. be surprised if he asked that question and he Eric Churches goes from the infinite regress to the moral argument <laughs> <laughs> if god doesn't exist me killing you is not is not immoral i love how he uses those examples so it's just hey if a person was coming and shoot you right now would you like that and they're like no i wouldn't like that ha huh, you believe in god it, it's so bad man <laughs> I, I can talk the, about it for hours, like how bad Turk is, but oh man, yeah. So let's actually finish the video this time. You know, I, I'm, going I'm gonna to be, like, I'm gonna be. Before we get into this, I really today we're gonna, uh, we're gonna do like we should do a I know responding to a, I know the part of the comments. Kent Hovind video. Oh, we're no, like <laughs> I went in the. Like, I went in expecting some Turk, and then we discuss evolution and consciousness, but no, we watch Hovind's. I've been bamboozled. Hey, that well, has you know, to do with evolution. Wait, what does? Ken Hovind, man. Like, the destroyer of evolution. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's a bunker of evolution. <laughs> no, we should, we should respond to some of I Know the Meaning of Life's comments. No, oh, man. I Know the Meaning of Life is just beyond parody. Well, like, I, well He still one? hasn't responded to me. Yeah, he hasn't to me either. Yeah, well, first off, before we continue, I just want to get this video over with, and we could just demolish yeah. our hands before, yeah, because I just go off on tangents whenever I hear Turk speak on anything. But I'm going to rein in my volition to attack everything he says and just let this continue. <laughs> Today, there's yesterday, before yesterday, there's last week. Question, can this line be infinite into the past? Yes. How could it be infinite into the past and today have arrived? It can be infinite if there is no beginning. What we do see is that okay. we now answer, live Please answer the question. 5. How could today have gotten here if there's an infinite number of days before? I'm so sorry. This is like watching two monkeys argue over a banana. <laughs> so, okay, I'm just... I'm going to briefly lay out traditional arguments, philosophical arguments for why time can be infinite. So, okay, the Aristotelian argument would go something like this, right? That at every moment or any like stretch of time, like let's just say, oh, I picked up my iPhone five seconds ago, right? Yep. There is always a more divisible segment of time within each second, right? So you'll go on infinitely until there's just an infinite amount of points. There is no definitive unit of measurement, right? And so in that, we technically are crossing infinite spans of time every time we do anything. And so because of this, the same logic would apply to the universe where there could be no beginning as it would be a little bit before that, smaller and smaller and smaller until you just have an infinite regress of time. And so that would be... <laughs> sorry, I was... Evolution taking man's word over God's, man. <laughs> but th th that's just uh, an argument for the eternity of the past, right? That every moment in time, we're technically spanning an infinite amount of points of time. And that if you say there's an actual infinite, that's different from saying that there's a short, limited amount of time because there's an infinite amount of points in either. So you might not find it convincing, but I I'm just trying to provide an example of the theory. Yeah. Are the running. only atheist here? Yeah, I'm, I'm B theory. Oh, yeah, man. I'm. I'm also eternalism. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Which is which? Which honestly, B theory. It's weird and unintuitive. It's very. We may do this in a video, but B theory for with God. What'd you say? I said, I said B, B theory seems to fit better with God. B 
We can probably talk about this yeah, in another I, video. Like foreknowledge specifically, right? If the future doesn't exist, if it's not real, then how could God have Also, knowledge? with the B oh, theory right. model of time, free will, there's multiple models of free will that works with B theory. Uh, right. Yeah. And as a Calvinist, it at least right. makes sense for me to stop miraculous right. video. Let's finish it. Finally, yeah. Jackson, you can't stop it this time, man. We just stop it. Well, it's just, it's just horrible. As it goes. It is so bad, but like, we, we just, I'm, hmm. We're definitely doing better than the Americans. They are struggling against inadequacy of the English language, which lets us construct nonsensical questions. How is it a nonsensical question to say that there can't be an infinite number of days before today? I think maybe I can try and address that by saying, can you hand me a piece of this nothing that was before, and we no. can talk about its properties? You sounded like Lawrence Oh, Crowell. no. Nothing oh. is non-being. Non being nothing. Do you have a piece of it that we can examine its properties? No, because nothing is not a piece of anything. So you're right, making Forrest, okay, Forrest. philosophical assumptions Forrest, yourself. Forrest, yeah. Okay. okay. You don't don't have have philosophical I I, let me, my let answer was next, that we don't next. have evidence of a beginning. That was. I'm sorry. The it's question is kind of smart. You can't traverse an infinite number of days to get to today. <laughs> Secondly, you can't be at the end of an infinite, right? Because an infinite is something that has no end. But here we are at the end of the infinite. Thirdly, you can't add anything to an infinite. But tomorrow we're going to add another day. And the day after that, we'll add another day. And the day after that, we'll add another day. So there can't be can an infinite number an infinite. of moments before today. By the way, this, uh, this, this argument was brought forth by a Muslim philosopher for about 800 years ago. Oh, that was horrible. I think he's wrong about uh, you can't add to an infinite. I mean, you just put infinity in your calculator and then try to add to it. <laughs> I mean, it works. Um, there is some really good work on infinity by philosopher Alex Malpaz that I'm getting. Oh, I can throw up in our yeah. group chat and I'll post it on Twitter. But yeah, he dismantles any argument that any apologists have against the existence of an actual and infinite, right? He gives through such a perspicuous account of why an actual infinite is not logically incoherent or paradoxical, right? So, yeah, if you want some good work defending the coherence and reasonability, the reasonableness of an actual infinite, then definitely check out Malpass. He's the best person on it. Actually, so, I don't agree that an actual infinite can exist um, because it uh, gave the five things. Presentism, and you don't believe in actual infinite can exist. And wait, are are you still a dualist? Or are you an or are you an idealist now? Idealist now. Well, how did Seems you to make more sense of the mind? Uh, mind brain. Problem. Yeah. Okay. Hold on, Gabe. We need to find out how the heck you went from a dualist to an idealist in like five minutes. Yeah, and like, it, do you know hour. the channel Purple Pill Philosophy? Oh, is that the one with yes. Mr. Brown? Well, um, if you scroll through one of his videos, there was a call on the atheist experience that kind of explained uh, argument from idealism to God, and it actually made sense. Um, <laughs> idealism. Also, if you guys are interested, I'd like to discuss the um, modal ontological argument from Plantinga. Uh, I like that one. That's the best one to me. <laughs> I, I, think know, it's I think it's I think Anselm's is better. Yeah, I just... Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. We can't define God into existence. <laughs> We've destroyed every single modal ontological argument there is. There, there's no point in doing ontological arguments anymore. Because you can't you define, define unicorns into existence. Boom. It's proven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, why are we watching oh, Hogan, boy. What are we wanting to do now? <laughs> we should do a uh, we should respond to Graham Oppie. Grandma P. No, not yet. <laughs> should, love, no, we should do a Dark Dawkins video. Uh, no, the we dark. should do rational rational rules. Rules. Please rationality do rationality rules. rules is actually okay though. Yeah, that's why we should do him because he's dumb enough to make fun of him, but he's also random smart videos interactions with. So please, please do rationality rules. Debunking some or genetically modified. <laughs>
Or GMS, yeah. GMS for Rex. That guy's dumb. Yeah, he's Albert. so nice. Not- oh, gosh. Hey, guys, this is like the best video. No. We got Cosmic Skeptic, Rationality Rules, and Matt Dillahunty all in one there is video. One innocent. <laughs> there is one innocent F word. What? And makes her start to chase you. Do you know what it is? Oh my gosh, these freaking commercials. Is this a live stream? No, it was live though. Man, I hate this. I want to respond to this one. Oh, here we go. Here we, we go. Wait, wait. Why don't we respond to a closer oh, YouTube thought, video? I thought we were still live. Said last. We tonight. are. We are. Are we? Yes. Oh, no. No, no, no. He's trying to I'm answer so Stephen fine. Hawking. This is my alley. <laughs> it's Stephen Hawking. All right. We need to do this. Oh. Oh, fuck this yeah. Be- we are live. Oh, we are. Okay. Yeah. We are live. Correct. Yes. Oh. Yeah, okay, let's see <laughs> Did you forget got? we were live? <laughs> we should do a Richard Carrier video. I have like a few of those. I hate those videos. It makes my brain feel like I'm losing. I'm reading his book. Which one? On the historicity of Jesus. The, the reason to doubt the historicity of Jesus or whatever. Oh, that book's you just wasted like thirty dollars, dude. Yeah. You know no, I, bu- I got it for free on Kindle. It was free. <laughs> That's my. Like, that, you know why it's free? Because, because it's garbage. It's terrible. <laughs> For like, like so the, bad. He's like. He, he's like. Uh, they don't. There's not a consensus on Jesus's existence or something. Dude, his first chapter something was like just, that. Um. I was like, they're literally one of the only people that. <laughs> you should it. check his footnotes. You should check his footnotes. He Even Tio admitted Jesus existing. Tio of all people, I love how nobody's gonna get the reference. Who's like watching the live stream? It's an inside oh, joke. Joshua will get it. Tio. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? Spicy will get it. Yeah. Oh man, we can't watch a 19 minute video. You know how long we're gonna be talking about this? Like, three hours. <laughs> we're just gonna, okay. We're, we put 30 minutes on a five-minute video, man. We can now watch, watch like 10 minutes. I promise I'm going to pause it, and then we'll watch the other 10 minutes. Okay. 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 Oh, that the no. evidence leads us... Here we go. ...with one of the following two <laughs> options. If the universe had a beginning, it must have had a beginner. What are our two options? We said, we said, number one, either no one created something out of nothing, which is the atheistic view, or... Someone created something out of nothing, which is the theistic view. Now, my question last night was this. Which view is more reasonable? Well, the way he's presenting it, it's already a straw man. That no one, someone created something out of nothing. It's got to be someone, oh, right? No. And last night we said, you can ask who made the someone, but that's certainly more reasonable than no one. No one, no one created something out of nothing, please. Nothing comes from nothing. Nothing ever could, right? Okay, even Julie Andrews knew that. Didn't she sing that in some sort of Sound of Music movie or something? Nothing comes from nothing. So the much more reasonable thing out of nothing. And we dealt with the who made God question last night, so I won't go into that. No one made God. We, we know that. He's the uncaused first cause. And then we asked, if you want to ask a good question of an atheist, ask, if there is no God, why is there something rather than nothing at all? If there is no God, why does anything exist? If the atheist says, oh well, my the God, existed, therefore it doesn't need a cause, you would say, what? <laughs> Search and add Kalam, cosmological argument. Second law, universe expanding, radiation after the glow, great seeds, and then the Kalam cosmological argument confirms that. So oh, oh my. the evidence points to the fact that space, matter, and time had a beginning. If that's the case, the cause must be spaceless, timeless, timeless in material, personal. Right? Now, that's what we did last night, and we ended on this slide. We said, how do atheists respond to this evidence? So now we're going to pick Uh-oh. up from where we Here left off last point. night. Okay, you guys ready to go? Because you're going to say, well, Frank, that's just... Evidence is good. It makes sense Stephen that Hawking. in the beginning there must have been a beginner. But how do atheists respond to this? 
How many people have seen this book, The Grand Design by Stephen Hawking? Okay, a few of us have. This book came out about six months or so ago. And uh, this book got a lot of press because Stephen Hawking yes, is a did. very well-respected physicist who um, has been around a long time. And Hawking is kind of a medical miracle. I don't know if you know much. He was diagnosed yeah, with wheelchair. Lou Gehrig's disease, ALS. And Lou Gehrig's disease normally will kill you in a year or two. Well, here's Hawking, 40 years later, still alive. Uh, so he's sort of a medical miracle. Brilliant man. And he wrote this book called The Grand Design with another author. Let's take a look at what he says in this book because it got a lot of attention. And he is a leading nope. atheist. All right. First leading of all, atheist. Hawking agreed that the, much of the surge evidence we've already been through. He's, he agrees with what we've been through so far. Secondly, he agrees that our universe appears to be highly fine-tuned for life. And we're going to talk more about the fine-tuning here in a few minutes. I mentioned a little bit of it when we talked about the G in surge, the great galaxy seeds. But Hawking's already agreeing with that. Now let's go into the book. And by the way, last night we had a question from a young lady in the back. She was holding her little baby. you remember? In a little bit more detail. Here are some philosophical problems with the book. Here's what Hawking says. Before I put that up here, let me point this. One thing I like about Hawking is that he tells you exactly where he's coming from. He does not beat around the bush. He just says it in plain English. Here's what he says. Like oh, I hope he said it in English. He just said it in this Spanish. This book is <laughs> the concept of scientific determinism. Symbolic logic. That there are no miracles or exceptions to the laws of nature. Now, what he did here last night stated it very well. He was saying, Hawking was saying, that every cause in the world, in the universe, is the product of a prior natural event. So there oh, are no miracles. No. There are no exceptions to this. Everything is just a product of a previous natural event. And me. Okay, that's called scientific determinism. What does that imply? I'm not called that. You idiot. Philosophical not assertion, idiot. not a scientific conclusion. It begs the question in favor of atheism. Do you what? see that this is a philosophical conclusion he makes here? Uh, he can't here? learn this by doing yeah, some I'm sort positive. of experiment. This is... this is not a scientific. Okay. We got five minutes too. This has to be a world record. We have never done this before. This is huge for us. We went five whole minutes listening to Frank Turk without yelling at him. Okay. I wanted so, to. I, yeah. I wanted <laughs> it was so. It took. How many times I would have paused it like 30 seconds? <laughs> okay. So, number one, uh, scientific determinism isn't real. Nobody's used that term. There is not a single philosopher who has said, oh, I'm a scientific determinist. N nobody says that shit because it's not real, right? It's scientism. Right. Or, yeah. He's talking about like. He's talking about like, uh, well, no, it yeah, he's talking about naturalism, but like scientific it. determinism. Right. Yeah, I'm a right. scientific determinist. <laughs> oh, yeah. You go up and you ask um, Alex Rosenberg what is the philosophy of nature is. Oh, I'm a scientific determinist. <laughs> no, nobody says that. It's not you real. Go up the gram off and be like, bro, are you a scientific determinist? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, he's going to be yeah. like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Graham Hoppe is not going to know what you're talking about if you call him a scientific determinist because it's not a real term. But um, so what he would be talking about is a mechanical philosophy of nature, right? It's called oh, a mechanistic man. mechanical philosophy of nature that re began with Rene Descartes, John Locke, and has continued on through Sam very Harris. yeah, it's Sam Harris and Dorothy also, but I'm not going to mention Sam Harris's name along with Descartes and John yeah. Locke. So. Yeah, but it was this early, very reductionist philosophy that stated that all that exists in the world is matter, and matter has mass, motion, and energy, and energy in between particles that contain mass. As they move, they impute energy onto each other, and that's all there is. Matter and motion. It's a very reductive view of the world, right? Colors, causal powers, substantial forms, formal causes, efficient causes, final causes, 
intentionality, natural teleology. All of these aspects of the Aristotelian philosophy of nature were abstracted and all that was left was passive, mindless, undirected matter. And so that, I believe, would be a fairly accurate view of the philosophy that Hawking is attempting to elucidate or put forth, right? That it is a yeah. sort of, right, me mechanical philosophy of nature, which is accurate, right? And yeah, I just want to say off the bat that Hawking is wrong, right? This isn't in scientific determinism, of is. a scientific way of thinking. Like yeah, this is a philosophy of nature that became popular during the 1700s with modern science, not because of any scientific discoveries, but because it was culturally fashionable at the time. And so many scientists today adopt it uncritically because it's assumed in their field of study, even though nothing in science says it's true, it's a philosophy that is assumed in science, even though it's not it's necessary. Like right, yeah. Like materialism, neuroscience. Like I'm now a Christian scientific determinist. A Christian scientific determinist. Yeah, like how many neuroscientists will assume materialism, even though neuroscience has improved materialism, it's a culturally accepted background for neuroscience, much how the reductionist mechanical velocity of nature is accepted in physics, even though we, physics hasn't proved it yet. And so, yeah, it's a philosophy of nature that is culturally connected to science, even though it's not scientific at all. And so I just wanted to get that out of the way. But Frank Turek's interpretation and argument of this, argument against this is completely horrific. It is an egregious act of design apologetics. And earlier when he said that the atheistic view is that nobody caused something out of nothing. That's not the atheistic view. Yeah, go tell that to Graham Oppie. Yeah, tell that to Graham Oppie, right? Because so just Graham be like, the universe is always here. Yeah, Graham Oppie's view at least was that there was a necessary initial state of the universe, that that state of matter was absolutely metaphysically necessary. That's Oppie's view. That's another contrary. And yeah, Hume's was that the universe was necessary or that there was an infinite regress of causes, right? And so there are so many other views that have been put forward by sophisticated and intelligent, naturalistic, atheistic philosophers that are not nothing created something, right? And even that, even the ones who do believe that there was no first cause, don't say that nothing created something. They would say that there was no creating at all. Just, it was just there. A spontaneous generation, yeah. So it's just a straw man more straw men, just an entire field of straw men, all constructed by yours truly, Frank Turek. And so, if uh, have, have you looked into the Sean Carroll's book, article of the universe, space and matter could could emerge mechanistically? Yeah, I read a while ago, about halfway through the particle at the end of the at the end of the universe, and I enjoyed it a lot, but I don't remember much from it. Right, so. Yeah, I am not super familiar with this specific area, right? The intersection of Christian theism and cosmology, because I am personally more in-depth in metaphysics, philosophy of nature as such, and even in that case, more neuroscience and biology. But I do think that there are good naturalistic explanations for how the universe came about, right? And I distinguish that contingent universe that we experience as such from what would be being, right? I believe that God must sustain all being continuously, but I believe it's reasonable to suppose that this specific universe had a naturalistic origin. So there's that. Yeah. So yeah, if Jackson and Gabe are ready, I'm ready to do the rest of this video. But I, I just, had to oh, I just wanted to it. say, I have looked at Sean Carroll's theories and books. Uh, they suck. They're... They are really philosophically inaccurate. Like, yeah, you could tell like he's just trying to argue purely scientifically and doesn't take into anything philosophers have to say. Because he's a human, he's a very hardcore human, right? He's so very they're really like ha they laws of nature. Yeah. He's a very strong believer in brute facts, for example. Yep. That's just how his philosophy of nature works. It's a very scientific, naturalistic philosophy, and so that leads to some pretty metaphysically erroneous theories i think he does good he did good in his debate with craig though that was are all three of you classical theists yes i am i'm more neoclassical i am 100 percent a classical theist without any equivocation 
I am extremely firm. Got me there. Got you to neoclassical theism. No, Dang it. he's a classical theist. No, Swimmer the neoclassical theist. He's the theistic person. You sure? Yeah, because he believes that God is brute facts and believes that. Oh God yeah, he thinks he's not necessary. Right. Yeah, because the classical theist would assert that God is being itself, fundamental reality that all being is constantly, not just initially at the Big Bang, but always imputed from Him. It's he is the it. infinite wellspring of beauty, truth, goodness. Right, and that's what I believe. I'm a very firm you know, I'm a very firm classical theist, and I'd say that they are more neoclassical theists. And so this time I'm the one who is outside of the norm. Usually it's yep. Gabe on his eternal conscious torment and uh <laughs> A mentioned. Yeah, eternal conscious torment and presentism. So However, I was open theist too. What? Yeah. It's very I just lost that. tremendous respect <laughs> So did I when I learned that he was an open theist. It's very, very depressing. Because he, Swinburne is probably the best defender of theism out today, right? I don't uh, accept his or uh, philosophy. I don't think his defense works for classical theism, which is what I adhere to. So I believe it's flawed, but I think he is one of the most intelligent philosophers, period, today. Oh, However, David Bentley Hart's pretty good. David Bentley Hart's my favorite, yeah. David Bentley Hart and a few specific Thomists here and there, but aside from that, Hart is one of my favorites. Like, is he a, a lot of my personalist? Oh, he is a hardcore classical theist. All okay. the way, right? That's and this book right I here, saw a video of him. Didn't yeah, the experience of God, he goes into a lot of classical theism, and a lot of the descriptions that I use for classical theism are found in this book. So, if you want oh, a good... No. I need to get that theism, book. Absolutely. It's amazing. <laughs> my it's book collection is horrible. <laughs> One book I wouldn't like by him is probably that all shall be said. That all shall be said. You know, I'm not a universalist. I'm not a universalist either. But Hart is a huge dick about universalism. He thinks that if you don't, if you aren't a universalist, then you're an evil sociopath. Essentially, I think he Wait, actually what? said, "Yeah, he said that." Oh, the only because he thinks don't... that because we think that God's going to send people to a place of torment. Right. Then you're an evil psychopath who has been indoctrinated, so you believe evil and moral things. So yeah, it's nonsense, but his work on classical theism is absolutely fantastic. So, yeah. And for once, I am the auto now, because I'm a hylomorphic dualist in philosophy of mind, and Wait, what? I am what a... Uh, trying to wrap my head around that. Oh yeah, okay, so David Bentley Hart never defines what he means by Thomism. He is very with Thomists on the nature of God, that God is yeah. immutable, impassable, being itself, right? What he is is fundamental reality. He is being. He is the infinite fullness of being. He has oneness, unicity, omniscience, omnipotence as such. There's no distinction between his attributes. He is being, existence, reality at the most primordial, fundamental level. Yes, everything that exists is absolutely dependent on him. Mathematics, laws of logic, continued reality, modality, possible worlds, all comes back to God. He is it, the metaphysical, ontological building block. So that's what Thomas. Wait, wait, we and really got off of the original video. <laughs> yeah. Well, we got some good questions. Fault. Well, the thing is, that's true, but it's also a Q&A. So people are asking us questions that I think we are obliged to answer. Yeah, we can't and, um, be like him and dodge them. <laughs> yeah, pull a Frank Turk and just ignore all the questions. I agree with David Bentley Hart on universalism. He is a bit strong. Yeah, he's a bit too oh, abrasive. Spicy is a universalist. Yes, yeah, Spicy is a universalist. He, he's also an I, I am too. Idealist. You're wait. I, I thought you were just tentatively a universalist. Oh, you know, I'm a universalist. Like, I'm an idealist universalist, bro. Me and Spicy just up in here with all the weird ideas. Well, I mean, to be I'm, fair, I'm a philomorphic Thomist, classical theist, eternalist, so we, I am also in a weird position. But I'm an annihilationist. Gabe is alone in, uh, in, in my camp. Yeah. Imagine being as a moralist, Gabe. Couldn't be me. Yeah, man. <laughs> hey, look. Yeah, I love, okay, I love yeah. that. I love watching people burn. <laughs> nah, Spartan, you're good. We just kind of... Oh, yeah, it's fine, yeah. No, no oh, look. Oh, look. Hey, I'm up in here with, like, all my homies. I'm just, <laughs> like. All my homies love universalism. 
That's Jackson right now, man. No, the thing is like where's all the ECTs <laughs> at? We everybody <laughs> should just like Gabe should just admit that like you know the reason that people are believers in eternal torment is because they love people to suffer. You know, like according to David Bentley yep. Hart, that's how we all work. We just love to see people suffer for eternity. <laughs> <laughs> It's not the point. That's not why I believe that. All my homies showed up to this live stream, and now I've got like, I'm all back. Jackson's got all his allies up here. I just, I thought I was weird. <laughs> Bro, I like to tell people what I am. I'm like a. <laughs> You're also I'm not a super. Too. Like, you should, you I should just go in the Discord and put I'm a unit. Uh. No, I'm not a Marxist. I am I'm a not Marxist. A Calvinist, though. You're a Marxist. I am a Marxist. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm sympathetic to certain aspects of Marxist theory. Yes, oh, I'm not a like Marxist, yeah. but I'm part of Marxism that I can. You, you think, think you're the I'm atheist. well? To be fair, I agree with many atheists more than I do so with other Christians. Right? Cube uh, seventy six. Cube dude seventy six. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah. So, so you know, just you screw video. the Frank Turk video and just start answering questions. Yeah, you know, you think you're weird. I'm a, a naturalist Christian. Oh well, I, I know. <laughs> no, I know a naturalist Christian. He's not just a naturalist Christian, right? He is a what? He is a naturalist Mormon eliminativist. Oh universal. no. Mormon. Yeah. Hey, l- listen, yeah, guys. Also- I am weird. I am a young earth creationist, but I'm also a naturalist. Okay. I'm a, I'm a young earth creationist, but I'm also a naturalist. We should just talk about. Wait, wait, wait. We should just talk about. I know the meaning of life. No. <laughs> Dude, he got mad at me again. He's over there calling me a brainwashed parrot. <laughs> Gabe, he never answered me. Everybody? You're always arguing with people and making them so pissed off. It's so entertaining. I, like you'll find a, random, find a random person like the comments, and you'll make them so immeasurably angry. It's I hilarious. Made, I made Atheist Republic angry. Atheist Republic? How? Like, I told them that Carrier was an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, no, Gabe's Gabe's next YouTube channel, like his solo one, is like is like uh pissed off apologetics. Like just that's his name. Because <laughs> like everybody he talks to, he has to get them mad. Yeah. Oh, I'm just I, gonna I debate somebody and then just be like, Richard Carrier's dumb. I'm a younger okay. theist. Uh, they went away. <laughs> How does that work? <laughs> You have to like really mess with the evolutionary theory on that one. No, oh, man. younger theistic evolution. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I don't listen. Think this is a, this is like. Ooh, what do you ask, Countess Vatchel? Do you believe in a soul? Oh, I'm not gonna talk about my view of the You're soul. You're a dualist, so you have to. I'm a hylomorphic. Oh dualist. yeah. So, oh. The Aristotelian <laughs> view. I'm a Marcus Trump supporter. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a capitalist. Yeah. Big capitalist. I don't think it's hard to reconcile naturalism with theism if you don't subscribe to biblical inerrancy or literalism. That's a good point. Well, to be fair, God is not a natural object. Well, the thing is, yeah. natural can't define what a natural object is or what natural things are without being inconsistent and nonsensical. So, yeah, I could see you being a Christian. Naturalist will. But one of my friends on Twitter is a Mormon eliminativist, so I don't think you can get any weirder than that. So I well, get the JVs. Where, Wait, where, where are all my JVs at? Are you guys an errantist or no? An errantist? Yeah, I'm an I'm an errantist. I'm a Calvinist. Yeah. I'm, like, I have to be an errantist. You have to be. Or, or the I spirit think of Calvin is going to send me to eternal conscious torment. No, Calvin's just going to do what he did when he was alive and just come and grab people and throw them out of a bar and be like, "You're not an errantist," and start beating. <laughs> Yeah, looks like um, I'm not sure if you guys have seen this book, but it's a uh, reform systematic theology. Like the first 200 pages are about the inerrancy of scripture. So oh, I think Jackson has John that. Dominic Crossan is a isn't a believer though. Yeah, he is. 
It's weird though. Yeah, there are postmodernist Christians. Yeah, he, well, he's like weird belief. His is like the resurrection was a was a uh, what's it called? Like a metaphor. A spiritual resurrection. Yeah, that's that, that's his view. That's so it's okay, weird. So he denies all the miracles of Jesus, and he denies his resurrection, and pretty much just says he died and then got thrown in a well, common grave. Well, that's what Unitarian and liberal Christians believe. Well, not liberal Christians now, but like the liberal movement. Uh, oh, no. Like the eight- I define supernatural as anything to do with the disembodied mind, like a soul, angel, demon, afterlife. Well, I, I think the problem with this is that... I've, I've been waiting if, to hit um, on this, actually. So yeah. let's just say there was a book, right, that one could read, and they once they read this book, they had powers to teleport, light things on fire, just these magical powers, essentially, right? That's supernatural. And, uh, right, these magical powers to alter reality and such, yet there was no disembodied mind at all. Would this be natural? Yes. Or if Platonism is true, and there's an abstract realm of mathematics, universals, colors, etc., would this be natural, right? Like if these magical powers and the uh, Platonistic realm, these seem to be prima facie very non-natural entities and postulates. And so to identify them as being natural, which is what would be the logical conclusion of this uh, metaphysical framework, doesn't seem consistent. I know it doesn't make much Actually, sense to me. Okay, I've been waiting to hit on this. So I understand from the last we kind of reconcile naturalism with Christian theism, and I actually agree with that because because I believe that if God exists, he is natural in the sense of it's not like he's some made-up miracle. like Right, you know, he is unicorn. like ultimate nature, essentially. Yeah, like if a unicorn existed, it would not be supernatural. It would be a natural object. Right. Yeah, so technically, supernatural say really has now. no. Yeah, so that's I mean, my problem. With- supernatural is no it's for non-existent things, and instead of calling them, I guess, like if you're talking about a non-existent thing, just call it supernatural. But supernatural is not really a good that is a term I use, right? Because if ghosts exist, they are no longer supernatural. They'd be natural. Yeah. Well, uh, so supernatural really that, has no is meaning. God supernatural or not though? Uh, like that would be a big disclaimer because he would have to be supernatural because anything special is in this universe because he would be outside of it. I think it depends. I don't think I don't think defining natural as what exists is a necessary uh, presupposition. I is that supernatural or natural distinction either applies to the naturals as well. Does he apply to most theists or is it just a restatement of the atheist theist distinction? Yeah, I yeah. think it's arbitrary. I don't talk about it much. That's why. I, Whenever I encounter somebody who identifies as a naturalist, I ask for them to go into greater depth and a more prescript, uh, more pres- prescript. No, I can't speak a more lucid and clear explanation of what they believe because naturalism is a bit. You can't get a very cogent and perspicuous yeah. understanding of what they think just from saying I'm a naturalist, right? So, I yeah, think but I think that did a good job again. Like trying to show the inherent contradiction in naturalism. In like, the E A, the E A A N. Yeah. Yeah, I. Hmm, I don't. I'm not sure about the E A A N because I'm I very, like I'm very anti-planting in all my philosophy and theology. So what? Why are you anti-planting? His whole model of God and the modal ontological argument are just incoherent. I cannot yeah, stand Yeah, but that. his free will defense and his his free Calvinism. Will I, I can't. You can still ex- have free will. You can still have free will on Calvinism. Right, but it's harder when you have that as the why God allows evil when technically it's part of God's yeah. plan. Right? Because you can still have free will, but it's determined. It's a weird type of free will, yeah. right? It's, not free it's, will like, it's right. a fallen free will. Right. So, so that would be He's different. A Calvinist from, though. Yeah, I think he is. So I, I don't know, like maybe because he. To be fair, he is not a theologian, so maybe it's just um, yeah, yeah. But he thinks God is metaphysically necessary and also not divinely simple. He's a neoclassical theist. Yeah, and I just, uh, oh, I MJ, he he wait, simple, MJ's like, oh, here. Gosh. Chris, MJ's here. MJ? Remember, I was telling you about him. Who is he? Is he the boomer? Oh my god. <laughs> Is he though? No, because like 
I recall very distinctly. No, he's the. Uh... Wait, is he the guy who's met Planting now? Uh, I don't know. Or... But no, I think he met William Lane Craig. No, because like, hold no. on, like, if, if he's watching this, I want to know: is he the guy? Because I was on a Discord call like two days ago with um Emerson and Salem and uh, John Buck, and we were all talking, and I remember MJ got on. And uh, he joked about being a boomer, and we were all talking about philosophy, and it was really enjoyable. He's a really smart guy, and, and I'm not sure if it's the same MJ. I'm, I'm hoping it is. I hope he's watching this right now. And, uh, yeah. Is this the real MJ? Yeah, he's uh, a boomer. <laughs> he's a boomer. Okay, so I hope and then MJ. Well, hello, MJ. I really enjoyed our conversation on Discord. He's a that boomer, was fun. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. No, because, like, we were talking about, like, God and time, and he mentioned um, Craig's view that God was sans the creation of the universe. He was atemporal, and now that the universe is created, he is now within time. And I was like, dumb shit ever. Craig's view is so fucking stupid. And then he was like, well, to be fair, he has studied this for 20 years. And then we kind of joked about that, right? How? And I said, well, if you studied it for 20 years and he's so wrong, that's even worse. We just kind of joked that's about like that. Aaron Ross 20 years thing. 20, 20 years, 20 years, years of rigorous time. research. No, the, remember the, he was like in the debate with uh, IP I, I, and he I, said, and he said, I have studied this topic for 20 years, having the same conversation with Christians over and over again, and not one of them has produced the R -R -R. Of their God. So, and then I was just like, what, you're not even debating that, you're debating is Christianity dangerous. Right, yeah. I'm surprised that people are actually doing the Q&A. I didn't, I didn't think anybody would do that, right? And we would just have to do videos. But, yeah, I'm enjoying this. We got uh, some live chat. <laughs> we need, we need like, okay, we need to bring R and Raw on here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who created Get the God whole who created God and faith and Christianity's bad. Christian crusades. You know, like all the, just, just bring everything. The bring his page. dump truck. Just... <laughs> He's the first thing I bet he's gonna say is something like the Crusades killed people. God is bad. Oh, you mean like all those atheistic commies that like <laughs> mass genocide? Atheistic commies. I love Karl Marx. I don't know. Are you guys watching what's going on in the live chat? Now, Josh oh, said, Jack, yeah. I spilled my water on my keyboard. I am a boomer. <laughs> I spilled keyboard. Then we Josh, to you, wait, we should get, we should get. Then, then, Josh, then MJ said, "I lost my typewriter." <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a lot better we than get, trying to work with Kate, with uh, Kate Hoven and Frank Turek. Yeah, yeah, we I'm, should do a. Uh, I'm surprised you learned how to use it. Baby steps. <laughs> Why are we being so mean Wednesday? It's okay that you're a boomer. You seem yeah. like a good... I'm Gen... I think I'm Gen Z. Gen... Yeah, we're Gen Z, sadly. We're Zoomers. Yeah. I wish I was born I'm in the 1990s. I'm a Zoomer. <laughs> I'm a Zoomer. I wish I was born in like the 1700s so I can personally meet David Hume and beat him oh, up. Oh, my. I hate... <laughs> yeah, just... Hey, are you David Hume? Yeah, how do you know about You know what's a miracle? Is that you're still alive. <laughs> <laughs> no, we shouldn't say that to Stephen Hawking. He's like, miracles don't happen. Dude, you're alive from a disease okay, that only kills you miracle. in like one day. Yeah, that really is incredible, though. Like, MJ trades his poor tech skills for insane philosophy skills. Yeah, I hear that MJ does seem to be very knowledgeable about philosophy. I want to be in the 90s. Oh, wait. I want to go into the 70s or like 40s to meet uh, young Swinburne and young Plantinga. That's crazy to think that Swinburne was like young during that time. Dude, he's, you know, Plantinga is older than him by like 10 years. Yeah. The thing is, like, Plantinga looks like just a regular old guy and is like, he looks 60. like he's like 65. Yeah, but then, like, Plant, like, then Swinburne looks like a ghoul. He doesn't look he, alive at all. He he's looks like he's 200 years old. <laughs> It looks like the I don't sad know. thing is he's still smart. He can still win a debate against like all the young atheists now, even in his mental state. <gasps> oh no! Wait. What? 
It's Swinburne Die. <laughs> <laughs> no, Swinburne. <laughs> Inspiring, I can't find an inspiring Christianity account. Got taken Same down. One. I hope he didn't get like. No. He got demonetized. Salem. <laughs> I hope he didn't get banned, man. Probably. What would he get banned for? He was like the least edgy account ever. He said I'm something like, wrong about the. He said something funny and he got banned. <laughs> Swin ever being young is kind of crazy. Dude, I got one of the I got a comment reported on Instagram by independent fact checkers. <laughs> yeah. Like, Yo, uh, where, US where's all... I know the meaning uh, of wait, live US... fact checkers. No, dude, I got I got reported on Instagram because I said Americans are stupid and then they said some guy reported me and I got COVID nineteen information. <laughs> oh man. Uh wait, you guys know Garden, right? Sai Garte. No, um, Garde Acumen on Discord and Twitter. He's no, a philosophy. I haven't met him. Well, he's a philosophy undergrad. That's a good question. Right. Okay, before I answer this, I just want to say, so, the thing is, like, about, like, getting demonetized and getting your comments removed or whatever, I was on a server a while ago. Oh, and gosh. Was, yeah, it was during the, um, Oppy and Loke debate. We were all watching this, and I was like, Oppy was talking about, um, like, what makes arguments good or whatnot, and, you know, I crazy view and i was like oh shit i hate, fucking hate when Oppie does this and i wrote it out then my comment got removed and the bot said oh we don't allow this type of language here argue about argument <laughs> arguing about <laughs> did you see the dude that was on that talking Argu about his his uh stuff i hate this dude on that that went on that comment like the live chat just to say st stupid stuff and i was well, sitting there watching loke's opening and then I, and then this dude's on the comments like Loke lo 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 retarded. That was his whole. As DBH said, naturalism would be more plausible if the universe didn't exist. Yes, that's, that's one true. of my. That's one Check of my favorite. Me, that's like a Frank Tur statement right there. No, no that's I, that's actually that's actually true though. The thing is, I love like no, because well, it watched, is. Like, clips but that. that's something I that like. like Frank Turk would say, but he'd say it a lot dumber. Pop apologist would say. <laughs> no, yeah, he'd be like, universe exists, only works with theism. Right, so I think what he said, he went up and he was like, naturalism would at least be a logically plausible or possible comportment towards reality if the if universe, the universe didn't exist. Frank Turk just, it seems to be doing exactly that. Yeah. <laughs> like, we need an objective standard for the universe. Boom, checkmate, atheist. <laughs> no, dude, this... I actually, no, I, I actually agree. Right I think Oppie right. is right, but it's, right, but it's so, so, annoying. so annoying. Like nobody, it's like nobody, insanely like, annoying. annoying. Like I, I will concede him, but like I will concede him that it's a good framework. But at the same time, even if your argument is sound and like it proves its conclusion, you can say, "Well, that's still not a good argument because it doesn't um, prove the premises or whatever." Yeah, or, or no, because it doesn't convince every rational person. But it's like unless the universe is necessary. <laughs> But it's I don't not. think the universe can be necessary because it unless changes. Um, yeah, having change or having um, finitude, it could be any sort of limits requires that it's contingent or reliant upon something else, right? And because it does definitely have those, right? Yeah, because it's a specific kind of being. It's not ontology or being in itself. It is derivative of its being. So yeah, it, it the universe is logically necessary. That's why God's immutable. Yeah, God's immutable. Timeless, yeah. To, to say that God is temporal, immaterial, uh, immaterial, personal, extraordinarily powerful creator of the universe, baby Jesus. <laughs> Jesus created the universe. Have you seen what Richard Dawkins critiqued Aquinas of in his book? He spent two He's, pages on like art. He spent two pages on the five proofs, and they said, "See nothing here." He, in one of them, he said, "This doesn't say anything." Like he oh, said, what? "It's not floating back." <laughs> These comments right now. He said, his on um, the thing was like a fourth way. He said, but even if we grant to this prime mover, it doesn't. I'm trying to do my Dawkins accent. It no, doesn't. Hold on. you guys have talked to Joseph, right? Joseph Kirby, layman on Twitter and Discord. No, I don't do Twitter. 
he has an incredible Dawkins impression. And if um, he sees this video, he has like the best impression. Hold on. Um, wait, who has access to the? I'm Hold just gonna. I'm gonna everybody, everybody on your can share screen. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. So God does not have arbitrary limits because he is being itself, right? He just is what it is, like existence, what it is to exist, to be, to have reality. That's simply what God is. There's nothing that God is except being itself, reality, to exist. That's the definition of God under classical deism. And so there is no limit to God because he is simply being. There is no specification of his being or reality. He has no limits because he is infinite the infinite fullness of being goodness and truth right so the only limit you could say he could have is like the only limit you could possibly say he had is he couldn't make a square circle well, yeah, right yeah we can't, can't do anything logically contradictory because that can't have that, that that's not even a real thing right yeah and the laws of, i like to treat the laws of logic as the way that god acts right yep. and so we said god couldn't create a necessary like a square circle, but God doesn't create that because it's against his nature. That's how I think about it. But so isn't it arbitrary that God would want to make a finite universe? No. no. Okay. So there's different answers from this from different classical theists. Stephen names, Stephen N E M E S. I you spell his last name. He has some really good answers on this. The idea is that God would create out of his love and his desire. I'm be careful with the anthropomorphic language here because I'm not meaning it in the same way we would say apply it to human intellect. But his love and goodness, out of that, he creates the universe in which there exists beings who are able to enjoy him and feel and experience this love, this goodness, which is God himself. So out of his goodness, he creates a universe filled with um, contingent beings that can experience this out of his goodness. So it's not arbitrary. But it's also not metaphysically necessary, if that makes sense, right? And, and there's better literature uh, from classical theists combating the issue of non -collapse, of modal collapse. But yeah, well, Anantius would just say the universe exhausts reality and is being itself rather go for power and intellect. No, that's not the case because it's a specific thing. It is not all things, right? Yeah. When we're saying the universe, we are denoting a specific thing, that specific property, and by that, it cannot exhaust reality. It's logically impossible. Yes. So. I like Brian Lofthouse's Calls of Powers ontology and God necessity. I'm actually not familiar with that. Is he a go back to your typewriter? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Lofthouse needs to go back to the typewriter. But um yeah, I, I don't know if Lofthouse is a is a personalist or a um for an infinite universe. Or a classical piece. Okay, so an infinite universe without physical limits isn't ontologically infinite, right? It is still limited in its being. It doesn't contain all yeah. possible properties. And it is specific beyond just being itself. It isn't being as such. It is a specific thing that is physically without limits. So yes, it would still be um, ontologically or metaphysically finite. So there's that. Okay, the cause of reality could, could have the power to make a universe with one particle or two particles. It's completely arbitrary. I mean, you need an explanation for why one particle and not two. I reject the, the PSR, so this doesn't really pose a problem. Infinite power is simpler in that sense. Well, That's in the true. continental or scholastic tradition, we identify being with power. God's infinite being is his infinite power. His infinite fullness of being is an infinite fullness Hold of on. power. So, so just saying, we, me, Jackson, and Gabe, well, I mean, me as this thing from Jackson and Gabe, are working within two different traditions, right? They're more in the analytic, neoclassical, this personalist model that Swinburne, well, I think they're probably closer to planting than Craig in the sense of God yeah. is the maximal being existing in all possible worlds, while I am more the idea that God is being itself. And I... You're more David Bentley Hart. Right, David Bentley Hart, um, John XF Kansas, Brian Davies, Left Thomas, off. and such, yeah. And um, I'm also more in the traditional scholastic continental tradition than analytic philosophy, even though I do use analytic tools when I do philosophy, but I'm more in the traditional way of doing philosophy, right? And I believe they would be more in the analytic, modern, logic, non-classical forms of logic. So there's that. Just to say, so I do not, my views and their views, we don't stand for each other's views, right? We are different individuals with different points of views and ways of doing philosophy. Just want to get Wait, that out of the way. You reject the PSR? 
I do, yes. Um, oh, no. I believe. I just think I'm like a polar opposite of all, of y'all, almost. Yeah. Like, like, y'all are B theorists, I'm an A theorist. I accept the PSR, y'all reject it. You guys are idealists. No, I That's why I PSR. track myself. You too? Like, okay. I agree with Chris. I just think you need to speci specify power, intelligence, etc. when talking. I deny strong oh. forms of the PSR. Well, um, the thing is, I don't use the... Well, my argument for arbitrary limits is different from Rasmussen's, because right. Rasmussen is a modal argument, and I'm a modal skeptic, so I don't think that his argument, oh, well, this could be different, is a sufficient one. I believe that since it's limited, it must have a cause because it is not sufficient, able, sufficiently able to be necessary or its own cause. So that's why I think it requires a cause. Rasmussen's is... Oh, is complicated. Oh man, philosophy of the mind. But so Rasmussen's argument is based on a modal causal principle. Mine is based off of a basic causal existential principle, right? So we both use the argument from arbitrary limits in different forms. Yeah, and I reject the PSR because I don't see it as plausible to accept. I believe that propositions are not the type of things that we need explanations because they're either metaphysically necessary or non existent. Like, Propositional fictionalist view. So yeah, I also deny strong. I deny the PSR period, but I also deny strong version. Is God's goodness required to explain why He would create anything? Yeah, actually, I could say it was. It would be. Yeah, I think that God's like, nature is essential to argue why He would do anything right. But yeah, I'm I'm really gave finished. I've been talking so much about God's <laughs> and I'm just gonna retract because I've been reading so much hard recently that I just have so I, much to say. Wait, you can continue. what? Rasmussen. I didn't hear that. I'm, Are you BSing? <laughs> the uh, one thing of responding to the last question was that the reason why it would be, it, it, particularly why would God create a finite universe instead of an infinite universe, um, is precisely because of His goodness. Because you, the only way you can understand the true value of something is that it is finite. Like if something's infinite, you just kind of sit there and you're like. It's like, you know how Wolverine, he can't die. He sits there and you think that it will be good because he can't die, so his life is infinite, pretty much. Um, but you really kind of lose value of something the longer you have it. So, like, the older something gets, the more values, the less valuable it is. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> my face when uh, Rasmussen is an ideal. He's also a universalist. And he also hey, is not is on my side now, Chris. Rasmussen <laughs> becomes increasingly less based the more I learn about him, right? Wow. He's Just wow. Idealist, yeah. universalist, uses modal reasoning. Next uses thing we know, planting as a, an idealist. A planting as a universalist and an idealist. <laughs> Dude, Swinburne is he universal? Idealist. Idealist. Swinburne becomes more. idealist. He became more I agree. No, he he didn't. Some more oh. I like Rasmussen He's more now. The, Swinburne's a hard duelist, isn't he? Hard duelist? Yeah. I'm His having book, The Soul. You get Rasmussen on your channel? Lucky. I, I want to get Rasmussen on here. I don't know if we can. We're your 63 subscribers. <laughs> like... <laughs> Hey, let's go ask a pro philosopher to join our channel. Oh, what's your channel? Looks it up. 63 subs. Well, I, I'll just tell them that I'm the philosopher king of Twitter, and, and I'll, they'll get on easily because that no, is – You just got to be like I teach at Baylor University. <laughs> Wait, I teach okay. – I, I, uh, I, help, I help planting to teach at Notre Dame. I'm pretty good. When we hit like 2,000 subs, we need to like meet in person. Yeah. How would we do that? You live in – oh, yeah, you said you're moving. Yeah. To Tennessee. Yeah, a uh, cool thing about Tennessee is that uh, it's Probably. like the mountains. You guys can definitely get Rasmussen. Well, you know, Salem, as far as Christianity, has been able to get a lot of people on his, um, to get on his channel without having many subscribers. So I think we might be able to. You guys can definitely get Rasmussen. Yeah, maybe we can. I hope that we can get Rasmussen on. We should on. get William Lane Craig. Yeah, I, I say okay, guys. So before this all started, before this all started, uh, online, we actually had Frank Turk lined up to come on in like a month. 
did. Yes. But he backed out. Are you serious? I don't know yeah. if you watched our last video and backed out, but he backed out. He was about to come on. <laughs> Are you serious? That could have yeah. been big. Yeah, that could have really like kicked our channel up a notch. He's such a he. he man, okay, so what if we could get uh, Richard Dawkins on here. <laughs> <laughs> no, what we need to do is hold on really quick. I want to take a break from the questions. I need to show you guys a video. Um, application. Share your screen. Yeah, you gotta press share audio too. Otherwise, I can't hear anything. Right. Yeah, <laughs> we don't want to have him have him have to read the uh, caption again. Although I'm kind of glad I didn't Which hear really this. Yeah, I'm actually kind, yeah. of, kind of glad you didn't hear the. Some Christians out there going, "Hey, that's not the <laughs> cosmological argument." It was God. It was God. It was God. It was God. No sneaky Christian apologists. <laughs> Dastardly villains. Hold on, where's the video? I asked Watson, the Christian apologists at the game. Craig went on a channel that had like eight subs. What? Which channel? I think Frank Eric's scared of us. Why would he be scared? <laughs> We've only uploaded one video responding to somebody, and it was the Amazing Atheist. Like that's not. He saw a big how badly we dismantled Amazing Atheist, and now he lives in fear of us. No, yeah. <laughs> I made a list that I'm going to read out right now. These are the people I want to get on the channel. Okay, uh, and everybody watching this, if you're one of these people, I mean, you're probably not because, like, why would you watch this video? I want to get okay. I want to get like Spartan theology on here. I'm sure he'd yeah. agree to that. So I, I, I want to see. Spicy, yeah. I've never talked to him or seen his face. He's so mysterious. And MJ. Yeah, he has the same icon on all of his. I've seen him on comments on YouTube videos before, and I like got on there. It's like, yeah. yo, Josh. And uh, so here are some of the people I want to get on. I want to get Andrew Loke, Grandma B, Tyler McNabb, Dustin Crummit. Oh, gosh. If we can get ghost guys on there. Yeah, Tyler McNabb does reformed epistemology in the vein of Plantinga. Dustin Crummit is a hardcore duelist. Um, Trick to the core, he is the uh, Mormon eliminativist I was, I was talking about. And Shannon Q, I want to get Shannon Q on, and she'd probably be all right doing it. Uh, yeah, I know the meaning of life. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, no, because I've talked to him. Wait, debating him. I want to debate him. No, not I know the meaning of life. He's too. You young. get Bernard cashed up. So, yeah, um, I'd like to get Shannon on, and I think that's plausible to do. I want to get Robert Coons on, Felipe Leon, uh, Joshua Rasmussen. Scott Clifton. I really want to Alex get Scott Bruce. Uh, Richard Bruce Swinburne. Um, Elephant Philosophy I want to get. How Dale do we get Swinburne on here? We need to get him on here before you guys in like the next five days. <laughs> <laughs> the guy, I, like like, I swear, I'm going right right to look him up tomorrow. I swear, I'm going to – I feel like I live every, like, time I, every time I look him up, I think he's dead. Yes, I keep thinking, oh man, did he die today? And I look him up and it's like Swinburne is that guy. Like, Swinburne is that guy who like he's a major philosopher and then he like has a heart attack back in the middle of McDonald's and dies. Like it's just that yeah, well, it's just like, that person I imagine. Every time I look him up, you're like, is he dead yet? Imagine him arguing with a McDonald's employee. <laughs> Wait, no, you guys know um, you guys heard of Noam Chomsky, right? I've heard his yeah. name. 95 years old. And he just did a Discord AMA. And I listened in on it. And he sounded like he was going to just die at any moment. <laughs> He's so old. He is literally a fossil. Did he, he was, actually die? No. He, he's still alive. And he's 95 doing a Discord I AMA. he died. Do you think reformed epistemology is good? Yes. Eh. It's okay. But yeah, I also want to get um Joe Schmidt on and... Yeah. Uh, Father Gregory Pine, Ben Watkins, Dale Tuggy, Matt Dillon Hunty. Matt Dill Hunty. <laughs> but we're getting okay. Here's my list. All right. So we have Chris's list. My list is Aaron Raw, Matt Dill Hunty, oh Sam God. Harris, Richard Dawkins. <laughs> here's my list. 
Richard Carrier. <laughs> Frank Turek, Kent Hovind, Ken Hale. <laughs> Here's my list. Richard Carrier. Um, uh, genetically modified skeptic. Um, T.O. <laughs> uh, I know the meaning of life. Uh, but he probably won't ever come on, and the only thing that'll happen is he'll like appear for two seconds and be like brainwashed, tear it, and then leave. Um, what's the other guy's name? Oh, and I really, really want to get Tim O'Neill on here. I want to get Mike Lincona. Tim O'Neill. And like, oh. yeah, we should get Joe Schmid. Ooh, Alex Malthus. Joe Schmidt, Carl Marx. Yeah, we- Jesus. <laughs> No, but yeah, Joe Schmidt was on my list. I really want to get him on. Uh, yeah, I've actually thought about bring, that. I do want to get bring Trady, Trady for discussion. Yeah. That would be good. He's actually yeah, he's not good. dumb. Nice he's guy. On. He's actually nice, too. He's not like Tio, like, you guys are so effing retarded. Tio is amazing. <laughs> I love him. Knows who Tio is. Everyone Tio that's is talking fun. in here knows who he is. Spicy knows who he is. Yeah. Trent, Trent, Tyler, Moore, yeah, Trent Dodger, he, J.P. Moreland. J.P. Moreland. Oh, yeah, that'd be good. I might no. talk to him about the mind-brain problem. I feel like we just, like, bully J.P. Moreland, like, unintentionally, because, like, we're all, like, anti-duelists. And we just I'm be going not, in. I'm so I love J.P. Moreland. I it's feel bad. Cool. His, like, my, his uh, what is it, the argument that he puts in the black world, the argument from reason? People trash No, he does the argument from reason. Victor Repapert does the. Uh, <laughs> 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 does he know who's Alfred? He's the he's the guy on there with like the Swedish flag or whatever. I, I've never seen him talk. I don't Wait, know what, what the flag is, is, but he's the guy. I literally tried to explain little logic to him for like two to three days straight. You think that's bad? <laughs> I tried to explain the method of his. I tried to explain how eyewitnesses relate to history to him, and he was like, no, that's not good evidence. Tio is like the, is like the, is like the Frank Turek, but like, Frank, okay, Tio is like the atheistic version of pre-sup. <laughs> yeah. I literally tried to explain the logic to him for like two to three days straight. I respect the effort. I respect the effort. <laughs> But I've come to the conclusion. But I've come to the conclusion. <laughs> it is. I think I we've all came to that conclusion. Half, yeah, I sat there for two and a half days trying to tell them, hey, if you've got two eyewitnesses to something in uh, a history of it, you've got pretty good evidence. He's like, no, that is not like, good evidence. Any argument you make, like he'd be like, okay, that's valid, but you know what? He he made made a, nationalism. Like, he, that was his <laughs> only argument. Like he he actually had a decent response to the te- teleological argument, which was like was God has an infinite choice of uh, constants to tune the universe to, since he's omnipotent. That, that, that's something Sean Carroll said. Yeah, the fine tuning argument is garbage anyway. So I accept it. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? what? Well, you're so weird. I accept it because of uh, Rob Collins. I feel like uh, me and somebody on the Relay Theology team would agree on more things than me and Gabe do. <laughs> like, Relay Theology is not terrible, though. I love Relay Theology. They're awesome, yeah. Yeah, they actually complimented Blackwell. Paul Draper accepts the FT. Paul Draper accepts fine-tuning? Yeah, so yes. does, uh, so does um, oh. Michael Tooley. Oh yeah, they accept that it increases the probability that God exists, but they ultimately yeah, they showed help. all the they showed all the responses to it suck. Yeah, Michael, to, do you know Graham Offie asks who created God? No, he doesn't. Yeah, he does. When? What is the? Hold on, that? let me get it. What book is that? <laughs> uh. I love how I love how uh, Gabe the Peter Flexen with the bookshelf behind him. You gotta be like all the pros. My books are like to the side of me. So like if I put my camera on, there's like a giant bookshelf in the 
Yeah, the thing is, like, my books are on, like, my desk has, like, a built-in bookshelf on top of it. So I'm literally at the worst angle. You can't see any of my books. Of life. Um, Wait, is that the black Who designed book? God Objection? Let's see. A list of atheist philosophers and thinkers such as J.L. Mackey, Graham Oppie, J.J.C. Smart, Richard Dawkins, and Colin McGlynn have repeated this objection. For example, J.J.C. Like, what? J.L. Mackey doesn't say that, though. J.L. Mackey argues that, like... It's in ni- it's at 1982, page 144. It's in uh, page, 144. On page 144. You have it, don't you? Hmm. Which one? Miracle Theism? Miracle of Theism. Yeah, I don't have it with me right now. Um, no what you do? You threw away Miracle of Theism? Oh, no. Um, Other House. So I just don't have it with me right now. But, um, yeah. I was about to say, how could I mean, you throw away the Miracle of Theism? It's not that good. Sorry, I don't really like the book. I No, I didn't actually throw it away, but I think it's very overrated. What? Like, how is it overrated? I don't trust any well, because- guys. No books in the background. Okay, I have a giant okay, bookshelf in the background. You know, I'm going to hold these behind me, and you'll see the books in the background. Like, this entire time, <laughs> so I'm more respectable. Like, Wait, I'm just- oh. Which one do you think is better? Uh, the uh, logic and theism or miracle of theism? Logic and theism, okay. 100%. All, like, almost- the 5% of the book that I can actually understand. All the books I have are PDF. Oh, what? yeah, they're free though. Disgusting. It's you need they're free, free there. or I print Physical. them off, or I print them off like this one. How do you have oh. enough paper and ink? That must cost you a lot of ink money. No, not of really. All the book, of all the books that you can print, you print. I don't have enough faith to be an atheist. I wanted best, to read it. Best book out there on theism is this. I don't know. Yeah, I no, think, thing, like, the reason I don't like Miracle of Theism as much... Bro, I have... It, wait, guys, wait, wait, I have the best book ever. I have the best book ever. Oh, man. No, this is the best. Wait, hold on. No, this is the best. Right here. That creation wait, ministry. Wait. Ken Ham. <laughs> oh, wait, I need to go get his answer books I have. <laughs> Okay. I'm so lucky that I didn't go through a deck phase, but I did go through a whole time. Dude, this is my favorite book, though. On the existence of God. Of God. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. By who? Who's that? I prefer- Swinburne. I prefer this quite a bit, but Existence of God is so great. Best book on the is the Bible Checkmate. Wait, Gabe, you said that you took, you're taking man's word over God's word. So you're a heretic, technically. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. <laughs> Hey, wait, wait a minute. I never said that. That's as That's actually okay. be one of my favorites. Like it covers everything. Yeah, that one's actually okay. It's not like it's not like I was in uh, bed. I was in bed that... when you bought this book. I'm still ashamed. Oh, but... I have that too. It's I've actually seen... good. It's good? No, it's not. It's decent. It's better than Turek. Yes, that's what I'm saying. That's why I said decent. It's not better than this, though. It's not better than this. But it's this is better than that. This is the best book. Okay, wait, everybody. Gabe, Gabe, hold on. (laughs) The case for Christ. Oh man, it's so bad. No, but the thing is, anybody who's watching this, who's read both the books, I want you guys to comment and say which one is better: the experience of God or the existence of God. David Lemley Hart or Swinburne, because the best. All right, we gotta answer Alfred's question here. What is the best response to Thomism? There are none. Thomism, Thomism is the best. Wait, idiot. Okay, we're done. I'm a Neoplatonist. <laughs> you know what? You're Neoplatonist? <laughs> Actually, I have a really good book. Really easy to relate. But it has to be this one. Mormon. It has to be that one. Ancient Israel. Hey, that was actually really good. Well, so it's like a call. Well, I think that, well, define Thomism, right? Because we're talking about Thomistic ethics, natural law theory, act potency metaphysics, hylomorphic metaphysics, the essence existence distinction. Like, what aspect of Thomism are you referring to? And I think only then. Did you actually read all of that? I read the whole Wait, book. what is that? Wait, what? <laughs> I read the. It took me two months. Books are those? 
Yeah, if I were you, I would never read any book ever again after I read that book. <laughs> what is it? Dude, I can't see it. It's good, though. Is it really that good to read? Yes, everything? it's extremely good. I can't see it, bro. <laughs> Bring it down. Oh. The best. Oh, it's better than it's better to me than the N.T. Wright's book was. N.T. Well, N.T. Hey, Wright. You haven't read this one yet, though. You haven't read this one. Wasn't that more of a politics book? Like it's really informative. All right, I gotta go. Yeah. All right. Gotta leave. No, Gabe left. I'm lonely. We lost now. one. Now we have, well, we got each other, and we don't have the ECT supporter, so <laughs> we are alone in our views without any competition. And now you are less powerful because you have one less idealist to combat. So I have one less idealist to combat. So, um, why? Here, wait, wait, wait. I have a good one for you. There, you answer that one. Which one? Reliability of the Gospels. This is so evil. You get the thing that you know that I've said and the least knowledgeable about, and then you're like, huh, answer this. Anyway, so the Gospels are reliable because they are in the Bible, right? And the Bible is the Word of God, and God can't lie. Therefore, the, the Gospels are reliable. <laughs> Sounds like a Frank Turek argument. Pre-sup moment. <laughs> no, I would... The, the Gospels are reliable because most New Testament scholars have a consensus on there are very few words in the Gospels that are doubted, and that's like in terms of transmission. In terms of historical accuracy, they're actually also very, very reliable, and there are multiple Just tests so you can use, but I was with you. I knew, I knew you were going to. Like, just make something up okay just so everyone knows i am joking i'm not serious about that like very clearly guys that was a joke um and yeah i, I don't think the gospels are reliable for the bible tells me so so yeah i mean we've been going for an hour 37 minutes man uh we should probably uh i still want to finish that uh hold on i still still want to finish that answering like, it's just, it's horrible. Which one? Answering Stephen Hawking. It's horrible enough that I just, I'm like, impulse to, uh... Well, actually, no, what I think we should do is, like, you you have an hour, right? You have one more hour till you're um, not able to do any more videos, right? Yeah. So what I was thinking is that we could probably end this live stream about now, and we could actually do a response video to a short little video, and then we could release that. So you just so we have one more video out. Yeah. Oh man, but we we were losing all of our everybody. Just as soon as Gabe left, everybody on the live stream left. Yeah, man. I, I guess. Wow, I'm very deeply offended. So Gabe was the only reason you're staying. Little apologies was the only reason you're here. Am I, am I they don't enough? like me. They don't like me either. Well, I mean. I have a lot of followers on Twitter, but none of them like me. They only follow me out of spite. Um, <laughs> MJ just left. <laughs> they like you because you're everywhere, so they kind of have to. Yeah. Uh, what what video are you wanting to respond to, though? Because there are like a billion I want to respond to. I want to respond to like a short video from Rationality Rules of Genetically Modified Skeptic. Ah, oh, rationality rules. No, because like I like how he's just. Uh, can we please do one of those? Like, all right. Just Rash I will allow you to do Hoven no. and Ken. Libertarian and free will, will by rationality rules. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that one. All right. Let's see. All right. Hold on. Well, I lost it. <laughs> Whoops. All right. Well, can we do that one or one of the ones for God? We do his Kalam debunking. Oh, yes, the Kalam debunking. Oh, that one's good. Him and Cameron Bertuzzi. Oh. Wait, wait, hold on. 
Six proofs of God since debunked. Yes. All right, hold on. Okay, how long is that? It's like 11 minutes. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, so guys, we are doing. Uh, you guys can still have questions and we'll answer them. Like, if you're interested, we'll already love because Gabe left. But um, anybody who's still here, we're just going to blow through this video. So, yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, here we go. I love how I have debunked in all caps. Like, so you have to know that it's debunked. The like argument wherever it leads. When we look at the most profound question of life, does God exist? We should certainly follow his advice. When we do, we'll find evidences that show us God is real. Let's look at six proofs that show God exists. Why, hello, my fellow apes. I'm Stephen Woodford, and as Carl Butt of World Video Bible School just stated, we are today digesting six proofs of God's existence. Now, you might be thinking, what? Of God. Different people in different parts of the world and at different times believed in all sorts of gods. And that's a great question that you'll find comfortably swept under Carl's carpet. Hence, we have to proceed with a very vague notion of God. Okay, the channel literally has Bible in its name, and he's asking what God. Yeah, he is very clearly arguing for just a deistic creator at this moment, like a creator and sustainer of the universe, not a specific God. And it's obvious that he will probably use arguments for the Gospels later. Th this is such a stupid objection. And also key to note is that many of the gods worshipped in cultures from around the world are rituals, right? They are these polytheistic deities that represent something in the world that people would amp 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 I can't speak, anthropomorphize and act as though they were these intelligent individuals, right? These spirits of the woods, of the water, of the harvest, etc., and that they included in their rituals, right? And this is not a claim about the existence of God in the great monotheistic traditions. It's a rig religious practice that is conducive to the needs of the community, right? It's not a metaphysical claim. And even the things that you could classify as metaphysical claims are about specific deities, not about God as described in Christianity. So it's just a whole different category. A God is categorically metaphysically distinct from God. That would be described in Islam, Judaism, Christianity, or Hinduism. So even if his critique was on topic, it would still be wrong. So yeah, there's that. All right, that's true. Your connection I have no. Yeah, your connection is not the most fundamental law of science. Is it not coming through very well? It takes a while to catch up. It's pretty weak. Um no, but it's okay. Like I can still. Even if they argue, even if they are bad arguments, I'm fully confident RR won't be able to offer good objections. Yeah, I totally agree. <laughs> like, oh, just want to say, Alfred, I really appreciate your done Scotus Abbey. I love Scotus, and I really appreciate that you also like Scotus. So there's that. That's awesome. And yeah, RR is a complete idiot, right? A lot of atheists are wrong. Like, I think Graham Oppie is wrong, but Graham Oppie is extraordinarily intelligent. Rationality rules is just dumb he, he is not intelligent so uh is the law of cause and effect and it says that for every material effect that we see thing. there is a cause is it not is the audio not coming through or no i can hear it no i'm just like muttering to myself about how dumb the video is but i don't oh, okay. cause that came before it or was and that is greater than yet. I don't know about you, but when I first heard of this law of cause and effect, I had a case of the rock's eyebrow. And when Carl stated what the law is, I smelt what can only be described as divine excrement. If you copy paste Carl's so called most fundamental law of science, the most fundamental law of science, into Google, you'll find eight results, four of which are mirrors of Carl's script, three are theists quoting Carl's video, and one is to an inaccessible. People aren't asking the right questions. They're not. So, simply put, Carl conjured it out of nothing, just as he claims his God conjured the universe out of nothing. What's more, notice that the definition that Carl gives us is of classical causation plus some suspiciously convenient words. And that is greater than it. No, Carl. Even in classical physics, a mere pebble can cause a colossal avalanche. And funny enough, effects are overwhelmingly the result of a congregation of causes, not one. Oh, and don't think that you're adding the word material. Material slipped us by. I wasn't. 
the universe is a material effect. So what caused the universe? Now, that's a bold claim I hear you all say. What evidence does Kyle offer to support his assertion that the entire universe is an effect, let alone that it's exclusively a material effect? Pause it right here. Well, he misrepresents the big... Okay, so um, Stephen continues to display his absolute incompetence on anything relating to philosophy and theology, and he is somehow proud of his bumbling and in, in inability to make any cogent objection to anything offered, even though it is so ripe with logical fallacies and philosoph problematic philosophical assumptions, it would be incredibly easy to do so, and yet he can't do it. And so his first point about the specific definition that the – guy, I don't know his name, gives that he can't find it anywhere on the web. Um, this also struck me as oddly, as an oddly idiosyncratic and conspicuous way of defining this uh, fundamental law of science, right? But what he's doing is he is describing an right. assumption of science. This assumption can be implicit, right? Like scientists don't go out and say, okay, here are how we do science and here are the rules of science. So you tend to do it. You don't it's not a philosophy of science, right? And there are disputations of all, and there are disputations in the philosophy of science on how science is and ought to be done. And so, yeah. But um, you know, the guy describing here is that he is trying to argue that fundamental assumption of science is that every material effect must have a cause, and whether or not this exact wording has another uh, media is irrelevant because he's trying to locate what he believes is a fundamental assumption of science, which he can rationally deduce from looking at the scientific method as such. He might be wrong, but the fact that this specific wording isn't found anywhere is a non sequitur. And then he starts to talk about classical physics, which is just not relevant, right? A cause is a metaphysical feature of reality. It's not present in classical physics. And this is going to allow Woodford, which he planned pretty strategically, to allow him to associate this concept of a cause with outdated physics. And so you can say the concept of a cause is also outdated because it's a, it's concomitant and is associated with this outdated scientific mode. I can tell by the way Chris talks that he is a DBH fan. Um, I really, uh, I actually appreciate that, right? Like being told that you talk like you are familiar with David, like with David Bentley Hart, or are similar to David Bentley Hart is obviously something I really appreciate because David Bentley Hart is a phenomenal writer and speaker. So there's that. Thank you, Spicy. Um, you might be an idealist, but you are pretty based overall. Um, yeah, so he does this strategically to where you can say this scientific framework is outdated and therefore anything that is associated or exclusive to it is also outdated. And a cause, and the idea of a cause as such is outdated, therefore, oh, no. This idea of a cause is associated with this outdated framework of physics, therefore it's also outdated and outmoded, right? So that's what he's going to do, or he's already started to do. And yeah, and when he talks about effects and their causes having, with the effects being lesser than and the causes being greater than their effects, this is a very specific scholastic analysis of what a cause is. And when we mentioned the pebble knocking something down right and causing an avalanche what would be the effect in this case from the pebble is not the avalanche itself but the minute causal eff efficiency that is produced when it moves and it causes the change in the world around it that is very direct and simultaneous to it right let's say the pebble knocks on a larger rock that knocks on a larger rock etc that causes an avalanche eventually the only effect of the initial small pebble is the knocking down of the rock that it directly interacts with, right? Everything else is an effect. It's a causal chain. It's a causal series, right? And so the only effect from the pebble is knocking the other rock. And to be clear, it's kind of odd that he is using this example of a cause because this isn't what a scholastic or anybody who adheres to this framework of causality the potency distinction would describe as an act as a true cause, right? It may move the other rock, but it's not causing it in a true sense. So yeah, it's a combination of disingenuous associations of terms that are categorically distinct, as well as a simple misunderstanding of the 
metaphysical framework in which these assumptions and premises would take place. So yeah, it's just a mess overall. And I'm so sorry, Jackson, because you probably had a lot you wanted to say. And I just talked for like five minutes straight or whatever. But um, yeah, there's just so much wrong with, wrong with this, which is why I wanted to talk about rationality rules, because he gets under my skin uniquely more than more than the other YouTube atheists. So yeah, I just had a lot to say. But if you have anything you want to say, obviously, go ahead as long as you want. <laughs> no, it's fine. I just feel bad for your lungs there. Yeah, like my throat was sore from talking so much at this point. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, if you're ready- No, it's just, what would you expect from rationality rules? Like, I'm that's pretty that much all I have. Asked, that he hasn't asked who created God yet. That's the only thing that has impressed me so actually, far. Actually, <laughs> he actually, okay, he actually has one that I do want to do. Uh, no. All right, hold on. There actually is one that I do want to do. On the resurrection? Uh, no. I forget. Maybe it's... Oh, no, no. his... The one of the mathematical arguments is also bad. Let's see. Hold on. Maybe it's not that. Is it I know the one, one that... Is the one where he thinks he can prove that God doesn't exist? No, it's the one he has one on like the New Testament, but I've, I don't. Hmm, I can't seem to find it. He had one that was like, "Is the resurrection did the resurrection happen?" And it was absolutely horrible. Man, well. Quickly, I want to finish this video, and I promise I won't talk this much on all the other proofs, but I want to get this one over with before we check out the others. Yeah, I was just looking. Oh, yeah. yeah. We gotta, you missed we gotta wait. the Big Bang, which we'll get to in just a moment. First, I want to emphasize that happened? by defining the... What's in the Book of Mormon? I mean... The Book of Mormon literally changed my outlook on life. Probably because it lies. Universe as an effect, Carl is assuming his conclusion of the universe having a cause. He's begging the question. He's trying to prove that the universe has a cause, all while assuming that the universe is an effect. That's what is popular today, that there was some type of singularity that exploded in something called the Big Bang. But then when you try to get down to the bottom of what's a singularity, community that suggests to us, the, the cosmologists, they say, well, a singularity was something that popped into existence from nothing. It's not right Except here. It's not they right here. don't, though, do they, Kyle? You're what? You just define a singularity as something that popped into existence from nothing? My God, no. That's, that's like Lawrence Krauss, okay? You can't use Lawrence Krauss as... as <laughs> Okay, uh, no, both it, of these people. Right. Well, like you said uh, earlier, it's like watching two monkeys over argue over bananas. Yeah, okay. This is the definition of a singularity in physics and mathematics. A point at which a function takes an infinite value, especially in space time, a matter is infinitely dense as in the center of a black hole. He's just straight up lying. There's This is ridiculous dis- dishonesty and disingenuity. It's crazy, so... All right, let's see what he says. You're making things up again, aren't you, Carl? As the theoretical physicist Sean... No, he's going to cite Sean Carroll. Carroll, to refer to that earliest moment of the history of the universe where we don't understand what is going on. It's a placeholder. That's not true. But the Carol- Big Bang is not just some type of term. It was an actual event. Even though Sean Carroll tries to explain it away. Yeah... It's, I'm not as knowledgeable in the cosmology, so I'm going to refrain from having a firm opinion and arduously arguing for a specific standpoint. So I'm just going to stand back for a little bit, but yeah, I, I could see how this is flawed. I need to do more research on that physically. Or, or lack of understanding. Thus, we don't get to call the grand cosmos an effect, since we simply don't know what happened before the Big Bang. Okay, what... Proof number two, design demands a designer. No, he's doing the freaking, like, car, like, planes, trains, and automobiles. 
Yeah, like, hmm. So I see a thing that's designed, right? Uh, my phone is designed. This other thing looks slightly designed, therefore it is designed. It's a terrible argument. I'm just... Mm. You're kind Wait. of wrong, I Carol, there. Oh, I'm guessing that's referring to you and not me since I didn't really talk about uh, what Carol said. Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how we're straw manning it. Well, to be he's fair, saying that, like, I understand what he's trying to say, but maybe I heard it wrong. But I believe what he's trying to say is that the Big Bang is, is not an actual event. Wrong, but it seemed like he was just trying to say that it's not an actual event. It's just a placeholder for knowledge we don't know. But I don't think that's true. All right, let's finish this. Ugh. It is a truism that everybody recognizes that this universe looks designed. In fact, when we see the various different aspects of nature and we see birds and squirrels and... Birds and, birds. and birth defects. Oh, that looks like my brother. My brother was born with a cleft lip and palate. That's what he looked like as a baby. Oh, well, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, it's the he's running the basic Paley's argument, and it's terrible. So he doesn't just say the Big Bang is a place for what we don't understand. He's referring to the singularity and for the destiny being a prediction of classical physics. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I see. Ra uh, rationality rules didn't show a big enough clip for you to really get that out of, out of it. So I see. What and billions of uninhabitable planets in a vast universe that's overwhelmingly deadly to all known living organisms. Yeah, it never ceases to irritate me that proponents of teleological arguments ignore the abhorrent designs of life for they contradict an omnibenevolent, omnipotent god. Look at the trees, they say, not the zombie fungus upon its branches that's been lovingly designed to infest living creatures to split their body open. Where does design originate? Well, you and I both. Oh, no, they're complex. That design comes from an intelligent designer. Big explosions just simply don't bring about order. They don't cause things that are functional and complex to come into existence. But putting aside the abhorrent designs, notice that this is William Paley's watchmaker analogy. It's the whole, a painting requires a painter, a building requires a builder, and therefore a human requires a human maker. It's the claim that complexity complex. requires a creator. If I live before Charles Darwin published The Origin of Species, there's a very high chance that I would be a deist, explicitly due to how convincing teleological arguments were before the publication of this masterpiece. There's a reason why the paradigm shift of Darwin is recognized as one-off, if not the most important in history. Evolution by natural selection explains exactly how unconscious natural forces can and have produced exceeding complexity. Probably. Imagine being an atheist and priding yourself on your knowledge of evolution and being completely behind on modern evolutionary theory for the last like 100 years. Incredible. <laughs> oh man, he's still. No, it, what he's missing is that like Darwin's theory since his origins of life Darwin, came out. Darwin was wrong. Most, most biologists that don't hold to like the neo-Darwinianism, uh, Mechanism is that he holds it out of favor. All right, let's continue this masterpiece. Furthermore, it Wonderful. perfectly explains the vile as well as the beauty, and the near perfect as well as the catastrophic failures. God, on the other hand, is and will always be an argument from ignorance. We don't. Oh, uh, okay. So, are you talking about God argument from ignorance in terms of like the whole? Planes, trains, and automobile argument. Right. We're talking about it, 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 like in every argument, because in every argument, he's not an argument from ignorance. Yeah, so it's just, it depends on how you use the teleological argument, whether it's effective or not. Because I think you can make versions of the teleological argument or cosmological arguments that aren't God of the gaps, but I do think this one might. I, I mean, his. He's responding to a terrible argument, and he's representing it terribly, too. So it's... I wouldn't say he's inaccurate in characterizing it as such. Don't know, therefore God. The trees are beautiful, therefore God. 
The glomerata wasp reproduces by forcibly injecting its larva into cat. There, get to the next proof. Proof number three. Life demands a supernatural life giver. I already went over why I don't like supernatural as a term. Yeah, it's just me. In the material world, we have come to understand that there is a law of biology called the law of biogenesis. Law of biogenesis simply says this, that in this material, natural world, life comes from previously its own kind. Shall we? Shall we Google Carl's definition? Yeah, that's not true. That was a horrible definition. Oh. Yeah, two results, one of which being a mirror by a Presbyterian church and the other being a quote of Carl's video. Now, when we look at how people used to think about life, they said, no, life can arise spontaneously from non-living chemicals. And yet every single biological experiment has shown us that that simply is biologically impossible. Like the day, Aristotle and his motley crew inferred that since complex organisms emerge from such things as soil and rotten carcasses, it follows that complex organisms can spontaneously arise from non-living substance. But in the 19th century, Louis Pasteur and John Tyndall disproved this long-established belief by demonstrating that complex organisms are the product of reproduction. Rotten meat doesn't produce flies. The fly larva within the rotten meat produces flies. Creationists such as Carl like to act as if this disproved the hypothesis of abiogenesis. Old organisms, as opposed to complex organisms, emerge from non-living matter. But it doesn't. Where did life originate if it doesn't arise from non-living chemicals? You see, the idea that there's no God suggests to us that there had to be some singularity without a cause that exploded and that explosion brought about design, which we've never, ever seen happen. And then ultimately somewhere the non-living chemicals gave rise to life, but that's biologically impossible. Again, spontaneous generation. Yeah. No, the thing is there's a huge, there's a very it's not biologically, highly, highly yeah. improbable. Yeah, right. So there's a difference between a fully formed organism popping into being for, without a cause, which was probably that was very similar to what spontaneous generation was positing, versus over a very slow amount of time. Every argument is an argument from ignorance if you assume the conclusion is false, the natural state op option is possible. Yeah, you're spot on with that, Josh. But um, the idea is that under spontaneous generation, organisms did not need to go through certain stages of development, right? They would spontaneously generate and they would either be fully formed or fully formed in an earlier stage of their life. So that's what spontaneous generation was. And that's different from supposing that over a huge amount of time, different chemicals formed extremely primitive forms of life or cells or things of that nature. And from then on, they slowly and gradually evolved into fully formed life. Those are not identical postulates. They are very different theories. And uh, this horrific apologist is conflating the two, and his argument is completely fallacious. So, and you can tell he doesn't understand yeah. biology. No, yeah, not at all. His his uh, knowledge of biology is extremely just not good. So has been disproved, but abiogenesis most certainly hasn't. To say that it is impossible that single-celled organisms emerge from non-organic matter is to display one's complete ignorance of science. Moral law demands a moral law giver. Oh, here no. it is. Here it is. My. No. Moral law. If some things are objectively morally right and other things are objectively morally right. What if they're intrinsically right? Right, yeah, they're right in and of themselves. That it is intrinsically of their nature to be good or to be bad. So, wrong, then there must be a god. I recently. Oh. He doesn't give any arguments for it. to express this does. same sentiment. And just as Eric defines moral laws as divine edicts, so too does Kyle. You see, if we evolve from primordial slime over multiplied millions of years, at what point did objective moral value? The results strongly support that these beings are not closely related to use a rise. We don't. Uh, well, most atheists don't say we have objective morality. 
yeah, atheists can adopt a moral nihilist, moral subjectivist, emotive non-cognitivist, any other view. And even then, even if they want to be a moral realist, they can be a virtue ethicist, moral platonist, utilitarian. There are tons of other options, man. This argument's weak. Like, I wish popular Christian politics would just move on from the moral argument. It's done. It's dead. It's been buried a very long time. I look at a dog and say that that dog objectively, morally violated some rule when he steals a bone from another dog. We don't say, hey, he violated a... Objective moral frameworks exist. The type of objective moral framework that Carl insists upon, divine command theory, doesn't. If divine moral laws did exist, then, by virtue of them being divine, it would follow that a god exists. But again, they don't. Even among those that claim that they do, their so-called objective morality has historically demonstrated itself to be every bit as whimsical and subjective as any other moral framework. At one point, divorce was objectively condemned. Now, not so much. I'm back. Uh, okay. Yeah. What, what's he even trying to say here? Just because our moral divorce standards is amongst. Yeah, but that has nothing to do with objective moral standards. There's a difference between. Right objective standards and culture of standards right so uh, he's equating to right if he's saying oh they're the same thing then he's already begging the question that morality is subjective so it's yeah not good all right baptized babies went into limbo now they're in heaven and women were once objectively less than men but now they're just different proof number five free oh free will, will, will idea true. that there is no god is founded on the idea of materialism. The idea that no, this isn't. material world is all that there is, all that there wrong, is, no. and all that there ever will be. That's false. Oh my. No. No, yeah. Materialism and atheism are synonymous. And, and and if anything, material materialism would fall from atheism rather than the atheism from, from materialism. Because yeah, there are plenty of atheists out there who are not materialists and not physicalists. So this is just a straw man. Plain and simple. Because of that. that you as a person don't really have free will. <sighs> Jesus Christ, what a load of gish gallop. First, Carl fails to define what type of free will he's referring to. Is it libertarianism or compatibilism? Because compatibilism is compatible with materialism, whereas libertarianism is not. Second, atheism is not the idea that there is no God. Indeed, it's not an idea at all. It's a lack Oh my God, lack theism. Lose my mind, yeah. Atheism or philosophical atheism is the belief that God does not exist. That's what it is. It is the belief, it is a proposition that there is no God. That this idea of a God does not correspond to reality. That's what it is. And uh, this whole idea of lack theism is not coherent. And yes, Joshua, you are correct. Well, however, they are not metaf... Talking to people literally think God is a physical humanoid being. Yeah, that's what... um. Latter day Saints believe, and there are some Christian physicalists out there. So yeah, they're compatible. It's um a long propagated myth by the pop about by the pop apologetics community that materialism and Christianity are incompatible, and that materialism, atheism, and naturalism are synonymous terms, but in fact in philosophical discourse they are quite distinct. So yeah, I don't know where else to go with this. Um Woodford's definition of atheism is outmoded and clearly not helpful for actual discourse, and it's a pathetic attempt at avoiding actually arguing for your position, and instead focuses on poking out the flaws and poking holes in the arguments of your interlocutors without actually making a case yourself. So that's all there is to say about it. It's just terrible. Yeah. <laughs> It's the whole, they're both just really bad. Lack of being convinced of the yeah. idea that at least one God exists. And third, atheism is not founded on materialism. There are plenty of atheists that believe in all sorts of supernatural, non materialistic things. That's true. From astrology to ghosts to telekinesis to libertarian free will and beyond. This is just an unfortunate common straw man from Carl. And proof number six human reasoning. <laughs> you see, we reason on a regular basis, we understand. Absolutely. blind chance random processes over multiplied millions of years reasoning and the laws of reasoning simply would have no explanation but that's the thing about natural selection isn't it it's not blind chance and random genetic mutations are random but the process by which they survive natural selection is determined 
Being able to understand the dangers that envelop us and consequently make decisions based on that understanding gives us a very obvious advantage that the unconscious process of natural selection would promote mammoths, and one had the inclination to consider stepping out of their path, then she would have a higher chance of surviving to pass on her genes of having reasoning capacity. And yet we reason together on a regular basis. From where does reason arise? It's got no naturalistic, atheistic explanation. It doesn't have an atheistic explanation, agreed, just as it doesn't have a non-stamp collecting explanation. But contrary to Carl's assertion, there is a naturalistic explanation, natural selection, that not only accounts for our success failures. I don't know if I totally agree with that. With which part? Uh, that natural selection is a reason we have reasoning yeah it doesn't because there are many ways in which we could produce a successive amount of generations right that continue to survive and live in the world that aren't imbued with intrinsically reliable capacities of reasons reliable cognitive faculties there's no reason to suppose that this specific way of surviving is the way that we would actually evolve, right? It seems very plausible that humans and any other species could evolve in a myriad of different ways with a plethora of different cognitive faculties that none of the, none of which are reliable, but provide helpful illusions that allow us to survive, even though they don't reflect reality. And so this argument fails, right? There is still an issue with um, naturalism and evolution in our cognitive faculties. And while, of course, uh, it's I'm not a pre but I do think that it is more possible to have evolution in a theistic framework rather than a naturalistic one. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Let's finish what up. What I wanted to say is, like, go, go ahead if you. I just want to say, let's we can finish up the rest of this video, and then we can stop the live stream and, uh, well, finish it up, talk about it a little bit more, and because I have to go kind of soon in a few minutes. Uh, so, let's finish yeah, this up. We can talk then we can head out because I think this has been a pretty successful live stream. We were able to get game so, on for a while and talk about a lot. So yeah, that just has been. Anyhow, thank you kindly for the view and an extra special. So, as I was going to say, it's fine. Uh, thank goodness, man. So hard to sit through. Uh, okay, natural natural selection is the reason we necessarily have brains, right? But along with that, we we developed cognitive we developed cognitive faculties that a god gave us or however you want to go about it. right but i think that's what i would argue that god has infused us but like so here is we got reasoning from we got yeah we got reasoning from natural selection because this mammoth took this road and this mammoth took this road and one went into this village and one went into the woods right so that's right. reasoning right. But re but that reasoning does not help you in terms of metaphysics, because well, it's not a it's not a survival of the fittest type thing. So I think that's the issue with his. Yeah, is that it's communication between reasoning and your everyday life, like hmm, not. Do I want? There are some reasons that are not pragmatic. Yeah, there's a difference between do I want to run into the street, or what is God's nature. Like, they're yeah. two different things, but they're both reasoning. Yeah, like, hey, can a material state be metaphysically necessary versus, hey, should I run into the chainsaw today? Very different forms of reasoning, and to equivocate them is clearly fallacious and is not conducive to the cause of his argument. So, yes. So, yeah, I believe, going through this video, we can all see and agree that Woodford's responses are really bad, right? He often argues for straw men and his overall case is very weak against these arguments, right? But I believe that we can also hold non-contradictorily that the arguments themselves are terrible, right? I think we both agree that all of these arguments are absolute garbage. Um, yeah, but even then, Woodford's responses weren't satisfactory. So yeah, I think that's all I have to say. I really enjoyed this live stream. I enjoyed answering well, your questions. I got off here. Hmm? Oh, I just said, I got to go ahead and hop off here. So, I so mean, thank you to the three people watching. Right.
Yeah, thank you too. Well, we had a lot more people in the beginning, but thank you for everybody who is watching, who's watching now. Uh, enjoyed answering the questions, enjoyed watching the videos and talking with you guys. Uh, we should probably do this some more, but for now, it's over. I uh, love talking to you guys and see you later.